This week's episode of On Stage is brought to you in part by Embrace the Promise, October 29 and 30 in Westmoreland and Kingston. For tickets and info, visit spuropen.com slash embrace the promise. Scar tells a new fiance exclusively on our stage. I just thought he was the most perfect man. Reports are that Squash was shot in the US by unknown assailants on Tuesday. Today we remind you about what the six boss had told us. About violence in a recent chat we had in Florida. I left that behind, I mean I look back on this. Is Shanil Muir about to quit dancehall? A discussion with a key industry player around that and other topical issues. Whoa, what is that? Reports on the biggest events of the Heroes Weekend are all coming up. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Winfred Williams. We'll be right back. This week's episode of On Stage is brought to you in part by Embrace the Promise, October 29 and 30 in Westmoreland and Kingston. For tickets and info, visit spuropen.com slash embrace the promise. On stage with Winford Williams. As is widely reported, dancehall artist Squash had been shot in the US on Tuesday this week. Information around the reason for the attack has been sketchy. Six. But what comes to mind is how the six boss responded on our stage in Florida to him being perceived as a violence producer. Me and a violence producer in a Winford. I love alone, I preach to you, all of the youth, them. So I spring at my place. You see me? I love every youth, I love everybody, just the same. You see me? I'm going to preach violence. The youth, them, can tell you. Me and them grew up in a community. I'm never tell a man, say, go shoot a man, this, go shoot a man, this. I'm not that type of person, Winford. I'm a jovial person. I love happiness. I don't like bad vibes. Godfather. And we begin our review of the big events of the Heroes Weekend right now. After a two-year hiatus due to the pandemic, of course, Sharky's Seafood Festival is back and has not lost its form. Oh, In fact, it seems stronger than ever. Big name acts took to the stage and by all accounts were well received by the thousands that packed the Sharkies venue in Runaway Bay on Easter Monday. Major standouts for the night though, Ja Vinci. And this moment featuring Jashi Chronic Law and a surprise from Popcorn. Over in the grill that same night, the inaugural staging of Gal Fiesta at Cayenne Beach. All the elements were perfectly in place for a great event, but patrons came out a bit too late. At minutes to 2 a.m., when the event felt like it was just seasoning and steaming down, police signaled that the fiesta would have to come to an end in a few minutes, forcing promoters to do what they had to do and put their top-tier acts stock Ashley, Skeng, and Kraft on the stage immediately. Morango, who performed after, was clearly not happy with what happened, but did his thing anyway. Build act Maladon 6 touched the stage as well. When all was said and done, crowd support plus the fact that all major acts turned out equated to Gal Fiesta being a success. It was a good show, good turnout, thanks to all the patrons that turned out and hoping that next year we can have something more massive. But trust me, it was a good show. 
we are very pleased with the support, very pleased with the fact that all the artists turned up and did their best. Patrons mm -hmm. turn up early next time, but, right. but we give thanks because it was a good turnout. All right, so there you have it, our review of the big events of the Heroes Weekend. Stay with us right here on our stage, still to come. Meet Vax Cartel's new fiance and a one-on-one -on -one discussion around the topical entertainment issues, including Chanel Muir contemplating quitting dance on. All coming up right here on our stage. We'll be right back. This week's episode of On Stage is brought to you in part by Embrace the Promise, October 29 and 30 in Westmoreland and Kingston. For tickets and info, visit spuropen.com slash embrace the promise. On stage with Winford Williams. Entertainment practitioners Sean Wright at the 2022 Jamaica National Heroes Day Awards. Among those recognized by the government of Jamaica is Chicago-based Dr. Ephraim Martin, founder of the International Reggae and World Music Awards, IRAMA, and many other entertainment events offshore Jamaica. Right now, right here on our stage, Dr. Ephraim Martin. Ephraim, sir. As always, sir, it's a pleasure. Good to have you, sir. Yes, indeed. And congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Indeed. Um, thank you very much and appreciate you always. A, a hardcore warrior of Jamaica, <laughs> you are, Ephraim. <laughs> and the government of the country is now finally recognized you. It was indeed a great pleasure to be honored um, by the, my own country, Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, I have been receiving awards um, all around the world, um, over 100. I have um, received just last year um, over 30. Um, two weeks ago in Florida, um, I had another national award, but um, there's nothing like be recognized in your very own country, Jamaica. Yes. As you may have known, we started this journey from 1982 mm -hmm. with the International Reggae and Rural Music Awards combined with the Chicago Music Awards. In those days, of course, the objective was to use reggae music as a vehicle mm -hmm. of expression for the voiceless people of the world. It was in those days to end apartheid and for the freedom of Nelson Mandela. And as you may have known and uh, learned, um, it was Peter Tash and Dennis Brown and thanks to Copeland Forbes who they came to Chicago and we talked about the awards we were planning. And when Peter Tash heard about the end um, to apartheid and all those things, he said, I'm on board, sign me up, yes. <laughs> you know? And then Peter Tash um, supported it. He called, Call on Dennis Brown and others, Freddie McGregor, um, Muta Baruka, um, soon to join us, and it was the beginning of something unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I didn't realize that in 1982, that 40 years later, we would be here doing what we are doing for Jamaica and the um, people, the music, the culture, the arts, and everything for Jamaica. When I went to Chicago, um, I was with the newspaper. I was still working with the Gleaner somewhat as a photojournalist. Yes. Um, so I was assigned, I was invited to New York um, to the 1980 Democratic National Convention. Mm -hmm. I was there and then I was invited by a state representative to Chicago for the assault on black, um, black illiteracy. And um, there I was honored um, with an award. And then I was invited to join the Chicago Daily Defender as a photojournalist there. And of course, I later on joined them. And shortly after, started the Reggae and Rural Music Awards. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the, in those days, Errol Washington was the um, congressman Washington before he became mayor. Mm -hmm. And um, we were talking um, in a school room, and he was telling me about the history of Chicago, that it was founded by a black man, and um, DeSava 
but he was never given his respect. And um, over the years, I've been trying to do a little for Dusaba, but my interest up until 1990, 91, when we had um, that award in Florida, in 1990, be, um, before coming to Jamaica for our 10th International Reggae and World Music Awards. 1990, Dennis Brown, Marcia Griffiths, and Muta Baruka, all of us had a massive celebration in Atlanta for, the, uh, for Nelson Mandela and for an end to apartheid. Mm -hmm. So it was shortly after that when we started the movement. After that victory, we started the African Caribbean International Festival of Life. Because we learn of a man, when I walk into the Chicago historic society, historical society, I was greeted with a picture of a white man as the founding father. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, this can't be right. We have to do something about it. And then we stepped up our campaign to change, to correct the wrongs in Chicago. And then, of course, in 1995, um, Muta Baruka and Freddie McGregor and uh, other um, world music entertainers join us um, in what is known as the City Front Center. This is where this black man started Chicago mm -hmm. in 1779. Yes. And we had a festival there in which we were called Invaders because we were black people coming in to take over. Jamaicans. <laughs> Jamaicans coming to take over. <laughs> and it was about maybe 5,000 people. And of course, um, Muta Baruka, they got him in real by that time because they thought he was calling for like a revolution, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, with his music. And, oh, they you know, got scared of <laughs> Muta. You know, and um, uh, uh, Robert Towson in those days, he was one of my special guests. And he was, he's an actor. And they tried to bar him from going in, coming into the event. And I mm -hmm. protested and I said, he must come all the way in, mm -hmm. you know, driving in. So at the end of that festival, um, we were um, asked not to come back in the area because it's like an invasion of outsiders. You guys are <laughs> radicals. Yeah. So then um, there was um, a, 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 um, a lady by the name of Dr. Barrows. She had a museum called the Saba Museum. And it was a nice place in Washington Park. So she invited us. And we, we moved to Washington Park, where you have been to in several occasions. Mm -hmm. And the awards have been there. Over the years, we have been trying to push for the Saba, but it was falling on deaf ears. But fa following the death of George Floyd, mm -hmm. that's the time that morning we said enough was enough. I sent a letter to the governor of, um, a, of Minnesota. And in two days, he replied to say, there's nothing you can do. We have to wait our turn. We have to wait and, and, and the process. And that's the time when I said, no, we can't. We have to do something. And then we call on the radio station called WVO in the black, the only black radio station um, in Chicago. And of course, um, they joined us. And I then called on other organizations. And soon we had about 80 organizations that joined us to start a movement. And then my wife and I, Justice Shelvin all, we started what is known as, under my foundation, Martins International Foundation, mm -hmm. we attached, um, registered the Black Heroes Matter Coalition. And with some 80 organizations, we took to the street. And on July 4th of 2020, um, we took to the street. And when we took to the street, um, um, the police, they all came out and said, no, it could not go on. But we were determined. Um, the mayor was driving around. She didn't come out of her vehicle, but she was observing um, the county president and everyone. I was able to get someone from the city council by the name of David Moore to present the ordinance in the city council. And with that, we said, we are going all the way. We're then calling for a major monument for the Sabbath, no less than 25 foot. We want Lakeshore Drive, the most popular street in the nation, Mm -hmm. uh, not just Chicago, but one of the most popular. Streets in the U.S. Yes, to yes. be renamed the Saba Drive. Yes. And then uh, we also called for a city holiday. And um, of course, we closed down the um, Magnus Vent Mile um, from a North Michigan, and we marched all the way to Grant Park, where um, we had about 5,000 people. Chauncey Rapper was outside here and a whole lot of other entertainers join us for this movement. And after that event, 
we continue our movement to call on the city council. And after about 150 comments in the city council, last year, June 25th, we won the first round um, uh, unanimously and won the first round. And on the 25th, while the mayor was fighting against us, by the 25th of June, when we said we weren't going to go any longer, we won that victory seven, um, 35 to 17 in the city council. And you could now, we to now- To rename the street. To rename the street. And we now, when you go to Chicago now, it's no more just Lakeshore Drive. It's Jean Baptiste Point de Saba Lakeshore Drive, the longest street in the nation yes. <laughs> in America. However, affectionately, each day when you, when you watch the television, the various network television, and listen to the radio, it's all now affectionately called Dusaba Lakeshore Drive. And that's a Dusaba massive victory. Lakeshore Drive. <laughs> yeah, Dusaba oh, Lakeshore wow. Drive. And that's, that's with a major victory for not just Chicago, but, but for America. For black America. Yeah, all Americans. Let me say this. Mm. Before we start that movement in 2020, 80, more than 80% of Chicagoans did not know that it, Chicago was founded by a black man from the Caribbean, the country of Haiti. Mm -hmm. And when we started that movement, millions of people now know that Chicago was founded by a black man, Jean Baptiste Point de Sable. If, and, <laughs> Brendan, and that was a major victory. It's a major victory. It's a tremendous story. Yeah. It's a story of inspiration for all people everywhere. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and that protest can make a difference. Indeed. Peaceful protest. Peaceful protest. And that's what it was. You know. <laughs> what we have been doing for Jamaica over the years, with over 200,000 people directly and indirectly come to the shores of Jamaica over the last 40 years, with our 40th anniversary of the International Reggae and Rural Music Awards coming back to Jamaica, May 7th next year, there's no time for us there. We must make sure, you know, we complain about one category in the Grammy. But we have the IRAMA, which give respect and honor to all entertainers, rural music entertainers, reggae and rural music, from Africa, Jamaica, throughout the Caribbean, we honor them all. So the, the, the award will be back next year. The in award Jamaica. will be back and in Jamaica. When exactly? May 7th um, a, of um, next year. And we're now getting ready for our 41st Chicago Music Awards in February. And then we are right into the, after that we are right here in Jamaica for the 40th anniversary of IRAMA. If you go to martinsinternational.com, you'll l learn all about Martins, um, the work we've been doing. Yes. But if you go to irama.com, you'll know about the Reggae and Rural Music Awards. The ballot will be available soon for those in the music industry only to help us to select the nominees for the award. Once the nominees are selected, then the general public worldwide can participate in selecting the winners. If you just give me one second to thank some of the, our outstanding team members here in Jamaica and um, overseas, my wife, um, of course, and um, all the players and the people who have been supporting us in Jamaica. We want to say a very special thanks for your support because without them, I couldn't be here okay. speaking to you today. But the support of the industry members here over the years helped us to be where we are today. So That's about, why he's um, awarded. <laughs> He was recognized by the government of Jamaica at this National Heroes Day Awards 2022. All right, stay with us right here on our stage. Still to come, a Chanel Muir about to quit dancehall. A discussion with a key industrial player around that and more. Next and later, meet Vibes Carter's new fiance exclusively on our stage. We'll be back. This week's episode of On Stage is brought to you in part by Embrace the Promise, October 29 and 30 in Westmoreland and Kingston. For tickets and info, visit spuropen.com slash embrace the promise. On stage with Winford Williams. 
In recent weeks, lots of major topical issues have arisen in the Jamaican entertainment space. Among them, the Broadcast Commission's ban on music that glorifies illicit activities, such as scamming, drug abuse, and gun violence. We're also seeing lots of missteps relative to artists and their management. On our stage right now is someone who can help us to dissect some of these issues and to perhaps offer some advice. We're talking about Raymond Small, whose credentials in the business of Jamaican entertainment includes artist management, publicist, lecturer, just to name a few. Right now, right here on our stage, you may know him as Shadow. <laughs> Shadow, sir. Winford. Simply Shadow. It's a pleasure. Bless, sir. Good to have you. Thanks for coming. And it's good to finally have you sitting across from us right. to help us with some of these big issues. Well, thank you for, ha for having me on your platform, firstly, you know. Um, it's it's a pleasure. pleasure, sir. Right. All right. So let's begin with the latest, right? The Chanel Muir issue. Right. It appears there is a, some missteps somewhere in there, in the management of her career. What do you understand to be the issue here? Well, based on what I saw, because there was a live stream that was done by her where she kind of outlined certain, certain issues that she was having. Mm -hmm. based, on, based on what was said, it appears that there was no formal contract in place in terms of an actual written contract to say, all right, these are what the official duties are. Yes, it was articulated verbally, but in terms of having an actual contract that both parties would have signed to say, okay. Between her right, and her manager. Right, to say these are the rules of engagement in terms of how, what your duties are and what my duties are. Beyond that, then there seems also to be an issue as it relates to the financing. And I'm thinking as, as an artist and as a manager, one of the things you want to do Mm -hmm. is you make sure that you have certain things in place. As a manager, you should have a business account, right? And, and you use that business, you have a business account in terms of a bank account, and you also have like an email address where you know, okay, all communicate relating to that particular artist, or at least the business goes there and you have those things as filed because you, you need mm -hmm. to be keeping notes yes. of what is happening in a chronological order. Mm -hmm. So at, if at any given point in time, you need a point of reference, you can always go to that. As it relates to the financing now, what you want to do is make sure that once transactions are happening between, say, an artist and a promoter, you want to make sure all of that finances goes through the bank account so there actually is a trail to show that, okay, this is the amount of money that was collected and, what, and also what it allows, it also allows for better accounting because at any given point in time, you can say, okay, if a deposit is made, you hold that deposit. And then once you execute the actual event, as in a performance, then once the residual is paid and everything goes according to plan, then you can now pay over whatever is due to the artist and whatever else should be allocated to the other members of the team. So if at any point in time there is any mishap in terms of our discrepancies, you can always revert to the communique either via the email or the banking information to say, this is what is happening. So that business account is specific to the artist or is it the management company's business address? The management company's business. So the artist would not have access to the account? No, they, they, they wouldn't have access to the account unless you decide to create one separate for specific that, for that yes, artist. That is, that is doable. Right, that okay. is doable. Or what you can do is, again, as a business manager, because you have a business account, what you would be able to do is say, okay, here are the actual transactions as it relates to your career. Yes. These are the monies that were collected in, in the amount of X and Y, and this is what is owed to you. Mm -hmm. Right, so that at least if at any point in time the person comes and said, listen, I feel that there are some discrepancies as it relates to, you know, money's being paid or money's owed or whatever. The there could be an be. audit. Right. You have it. You mm -hmm. have all of that there and you can, you can quickly get that audit, behind right? you. Okay, so what, so what is at the heart of this dispute, you think? 
Well, based on what she communicated, and I keep saying based on what she communicated, because that is what we have to go by. Mm -hmm. She said she had enlisted his service, services as a manager at, from last December to present. And what happened, she has been working, she has been working consistently, she said almost every week, to the point that she's exhausted and been requesting a break. Mm -hmm. And what happened is that monies were being paid, but I, I'm not sure if it's a situation where the monies that were once the, the, the particular um, performances were executed if they were paid over in a timely manner. So mm -hmm. maybe they were not, and it's maybe a situation where that money is still being owed. But then she said she tried to, uh, she was trying to get her taxes done. And okay. then based on, based on some revelation, then she realized that there were some discrepancies with the finances, and hence the reason for her now coming to the fore and, and trying to address this situ situation. So that should be done as you go along, right? Right, it, it should sh be. She should always be know where, what's happening with the account. Yes, they you should be providing timely updates. So whatever the interval be, be it you say, okay, at the end of every month or every quarter or whatever it is, you are supposed to be presenting timely updates to say, okay, we did these shows, this is the monies that was collected, this is what has been paid over to you. So whose call is it to fix all of this? What have they done wrong, the management? Have they done anything that is out of order? I would say maybe the communication wasn't on point. I would also say maybe there wasn't clear lines in terms of how the business was being done. Maybe it's a case where she was overly trusting in terms of, um, mm -hmm just assuming that because you are management, these things are expected of you, and so I just figure that it would be done, which is fine, because that's the point of having a management, to take certain responsibilities away from you so that you can focus on your craft, mm -hmm. and then they can focus on, on the business of music, right? So the artist handles the creative side, the manager handles the business side. But clearly what is happening is that there is some amount of discrepancy, or as she may have put it mismanagement as it relates to, to our affairs. So honesty and professionalism right. on the part of management is critical. Right. Definitely. Definitely. Yes. Because as you just mentioned, an artist can be caught up with, with um, creatives, right. with artistry, with doing what they do best and leaving a lot of the stress of managing and paperwork and contracts and right. those things to, to the management. management. And that's why management's management is important. So let's hope, though, that there can be a resolve and that she can stay in music because she's, she's threatening to step out. I realize she's doing that, but, I mean, it's unfortunate if she should do that because the truth is she's one of the, she's one of the of better female practitioners out there. I mean, she, she, her music is good. I mean, I, I find that in terms of her offering, and she definitely has an audience. So, you know, it would be really disheartening to see her make that exit. Beyond that, I also think it is important for a lot of the entertainers to try and enlist people in their team with some level of professionalism. I think part of the issue also is because, you see, music is very informal. Yes. So what happens, you have a lot of people just come in the industry and they don't, have, they don't have the necessary credentials. And as I said, that is fine. But at least when you get in the industry, try to learn the craft. Whatever, whatever is your specialty, you try to learn that. So if you're a publicist, try to learn to be the, become the best publicist, the best manager, the best road manager, etc. Let's move on to the Broadcast Commission's banning of certain lyrics and, and the glorification of illicit activities, so to speak. Right. Um, where are you on, the, on this? There's a lot of uproar, and, and I understand because sometimes a lot of people don't really understand. Firstly, I mean, if you read the release that was sent out by the Broadcasting Commission, it was not genre-specific, right? It never said all dancehall songs are all reggae songs. It says all audio, which pretty much means that regardless of what genre the music falls in, as long as it meets these particular criteria, it should not be aired, mm -hmm. right? That's the first thing that we have to look at. Another thing people are saying, people are saying, okay, then if you're going to go and you're going to ban the songs, then you, you should ban all shows and you should ban all these other things that are being aired on television, so on and so forth. However, 
what a lot of people are not looking at is the fact that on television, when certain presentations are being put forward, it is prefaced by some warning yes. to say, okay, this show has strong sexual content, nudity, strong language, etc. So at least beforehand, before you decide to consume the content, you are aware of what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. So then if, 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 you, if you have a child with you, right, or, or a minor, at, at that point, you, you as an adult can make a decision to say, okay, I don't want them to see this, so I'm going to switch to something else. You don't get that opportunity with radio. So what happened, you will find, you know, you're just there and a song just comes on and it just kind of hits you like a, a brick. And you're like, whoa, what is that? I mean, case in point, the other day I was driving. I was actually heading to a, to a lecture. And I'm there driving and I just hear on the radio, um, yes, Miss Jen, I'm still a thief, still there committing criminal activity. And I'm going, while I have no issue with this song and I don't have no issue with the artist, I'm just simply saying, what kind of message is that you're putting out there? And, and I'm like, sing your song and that's fine. But, there, but this is free to ear television and free to ear radio, mm -hmm. right? And this is a public platform. People should be able to get palatable content on it, right? So if you want something which is a little bit more draconian in nature in terms of the offering, there are other spaces for that. There's a dance hall, there are on-demand platforms, etc. the YouTubes, so on and so forth. You can put it on that. The truth be told, does the ban affect artists? No. When we look at it, it's just yes. more optics, right? It looks good, but in terms of the effect, no, it doesn't affect the artist because the truth is that um, most most artists nowadays, when they break, they actually break from social media or some sort of on streaming or digital platform. Mm -hmm. And then radio kind of picks up what is happening and, and they basically cherry pick what they want and play that. Yes. So the truth be told, the, 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 the persons who are truly affected, I would say, are more the radio stations and I would the all... professional mainstream yes, media the, right, platforms. Right, legacy, right, legacy media, terrestrial mm -hmm. media. So what happened, because what happens is that with the ban in place now, what that means is a lot of the, 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 the offerings that used to be aired on radio are no longer going to be there. And what happens is that, yes, maybe a lot of the younger generation don't listen to radio, but there's still a segment of that population that listens. And now with none of those offerings on, they are going to shift to other platforms. So what happens now, you, have, you get a diminished listenership, and diminished listenership simply means now is that advertisers may say, okay, but if you have less people listening, then I don't need to be spending as much money with these stations. This can go forever, Shadow, but I want to thank you, sir. All right, thank you very Never much. Never cut it here, but there'll be much more discussion with you. All right. Now that you're out of your shadows, <laughs> now that you're out of the shadows, Shadow, we'll be having more such discussion with you, sir. Thank you very much. All right. All right. So there you have him right here in this segment, the man Shadow on our stage for the very first time. You'll be hearing more. Stay with us till to come. After the break, Bob Scott's new fiance exclusively on our stage. On Stage with Winford Williams. This week's episode of On Stage is brought to you in part by Embrace the Promise, October 29 and 30 in Westmoreland and Kingston. For tickets and info, visit spuropen.com slash embrace the promise. So this is where we meet Sidem Oster, the new fiancé of international dancehall star Vibes Carter. According to a recent US-based Fox 5 News report, the British resident of Turkish descent gave up her job in London and moved to Kingston to pursue her romantic interest in the Jamaican world boss. Sidem, welcome. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Thank you. 
Okay, and uh, Jamaica for you. Uh, is this your first visit? No, it's my second. Second, you've been here before? Yeah. For the same reason? Yes. Oh, yeah? yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> so you know a little about us. So how, apart from the Adi and who he is in the flesh and so on, we're going to get to that. The Jamaica to you that you saw mm -hmm. for the first time, how did that match up? The reality now, being here, mm -hmm to your perception, how you felt about Jamaica coming in, what it would look like and, and so on and so forth. Well, unlike when I watched Jamaica on Instagram and stuff like that, it, was, it seemed very lively, like everyone was lively. There's always some sort of music going on. Yes. And it just seems like everyone knew how to live. Mm -hmm. so, um, so now that... The, real, the reality is different. <laughs> no, 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 it's not different. Yeah, I can see how people are so alive and people are really nice as well. Okay. Yeah, so it's just nice to be part of a culture where it's not just going from work home back to work. I can just mm -hmm. see there's, you know, music all around me, people enjoying themselves. So I, I like having that around me. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that first visit was only a visit? It was a one week visit, yeah. Yes. And now you're actually residing in Jamaica. Yeah. In Kingston. Yes, I am. And, uh, and that has been a how long? Um, I came here on the 15th of August. Okay. Oh, so yeah. you've been here since summer. Yeah, so it's just over two months. Oh, yes. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and the visit now. Could you get into the visit? The first uh, in the flesh visit. Um, it was amazing. Yes. Just being able to, you know, be up close with him without any barriers and being able to hug him. And, mm -hmm. you know, we took some pictures as well on that visit. Oh. And it was a lot longer than the usual visits we have at the prison. So mm -hmm. it was a nice time. And I got to see him twice as well during that visit. So apart from your, all of the nice pictures and everything, did you get the time you wanted to, with him? Did you get enough time? Any time is enough. <laughs> like, is enough. Yeah. Any time is enough for you. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It was about half an hour, but that was more than enough. It's more than what I got before. Yes. So I appreciate what I got. And yeah. <laughs> and so you guys are going all the way? All the way. <laughs> all the way. You're going to tie that knot. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. That's, that's, that's kind of hit us like a brick because we, we knew not <laughs> of this, this love interest and this whole big romance going on. Uh, mm -hmm. Nobody knew this. It's just, it's just dropping us by, by, by Fox 5 I'm in the US. <laughs> um, so how are your family, your friends and so on, back home reacting to all of this? Um, well, they've always known for quite some time. Yes. And um, they were expecting it to, you know, get to where we are because we, I, you know, they already, they, were, they already knew what was going on. It wasn't nothing new to them, and they've been very supportive in my choice. Mm -hmm. So what got you first? What got you about Cartel? Is music, is story, what? What about him that got you? Um, from a very young age, I heard his music. Yes. So I did enjoy his music, but I just started to... I found him very handsome. Mm -hmm. So I was very attracted to him, and you could kind of call it an obsession because I just thought he was the most perfect man for me and walking the earth. Yeah. So I was, I just really wanted to meet him and just get to know him because I felt like watching his interviews and everything, I felt like he resonated with me. So I took it upon myself to make sure that mm -hmm. I get to meet this man of my dreams. <laughs> And yeah. the, the, um, the, the dream is, is, isn't just meeting him, it's getting married, yeah. <laughs> possibly having kids, mm -hmm. um, and so on. So have you been able to meet, uh, did, we, did you get a chance to meet his kids that's here in Jamaica? Um, I met Local Vibes in London when he visited in November. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've met him when I was there, but yeah. When did you declare to him then, oh, you know, I'm in love with your dad? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very open with like... Like that, know, okay. Yeah, I do like to keep some things private and I think he probably already knew. <laughs> yes. He's the only one you've met so far? Yeah, that's... Yeah. How long will he be staying here? Um, I'm not too sure how long I'll be staying, but through the duration of his appeal, I'm going to be here and waiting for him to come out. 
So you'll be here until there is a, a verdict? Yes. Okay. And past that as well. <laughs> and, and beyond? Yeah. <laughs> Anything for your love. <laughs> Anything for my love, yeah. <laughs> exactly that. Oh, my goodness. And, <laughs> so, okay, so let's go back now to your roots a little bit more. Okay. Back in London, you left your job. You were, um, you were employed as... I was in, a... Oh. Go ahead. Tell us yeah. about your job that you had in London that you gave up to come to Jamaica to pursue your love interest. Yeah, so um, initially I was a support worker for um, children under the local authority. Mm -hmm. And then I changed over to a housing officer within the Jewish community. And that's when Adi and me decided that we were gonna move me over to Jamaica and mm. yeah. Oh, so he was a big part of that decision yes. for you to come to Jamaica. Yeah. Closer. <laughs> wow. So, so that, that job, did your, how did they react to your sudden, was it sudden? Um, they, it, I did suddenly leave, yeah. <laughs> you suddenly left yeah. the job? I gave my resignation, but it, yeah. And did they know why? No, they didn't know why. But now they do? Now they do. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and, the, and their reaction? Um, I'm not too sure. I haven't really spoken to anyone since. Yes. Yeah. But love is love. Yeah, love is love. And love I, is I love. follow my heart, so. Have you lost friends? Do you get gain new friends and so on? Are people pursuing you like us are for interviews and so on? Um, yes, there are people pursuing, but um, we're very, very limited with who we go for as well. Mm -hmm. And in terms of friends, I haven't lost any friends, but... Um, yeah, they've just been supportive. I've got a close knit circle of friends, so I've just kept it as that. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, any particular date set on those things for the big event of marriage? Um, we're just waiting for the Privy Council. So once. So after that. Yeah. So you there's no date set yet, but. No date yet. But after that, you will decide when. Yes. Oh wow. <laughs> So we're just playing it by ear at the moment. Mm -hmm. Any interest in music by you or any of the arts? Yeah. Are you interested in music, <laughs> no. music producing music, ma managing? Um, I can't your sing husband really to me. Yeah. So I do manage him sometimes. Yeah. There are points. Oh, you do. I, you do yeah, management work for him. Yeah. So I, there are times I step in. Oh, you are. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. So did you have experience in that? No, but Adi has a good way of teaching people and training people. So, oh. yeah. Oh, really? So it's, <laughs> that's yeah. interesting. So how, you, how do you feel about it? Are you comfortable with doing that? Uh, do you think you, what do you, you will continue to, to be a, a supporting or an actual ma is manager and, and manage him <laughs> yeah, I'll support in the future? Him. Yeah, I'll support him in any way necessary. Okay, so it's my understanding that the album True Religion, mm -hmm. Vibes Carter's latest album, was inspired by you? Yes, it was. Yes? Oh, so t tell us about that. Um, so it's just like the trials and tribulations he's kind of gone through and mm -hmm. how we've become stronger. So it gives a little insight into how we relate to each other and how I have helped his pro like process and transition during this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, so the album is addressing those 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 issues. Yes. Some of the struggles that he's had, mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah. So, so, mm -hmm. so you were you were helping to write some of it or, or anything like that? Do you have credits on it on the album? Um, no, I don't. I weren't helping him to write it, but I guess I helped him by being me. By <laughs> so, being you. Yeah. Just a, a big. Inspiration. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I did inspire it and yes. <laughs> yes. How is it doing? Um, it's doing well. Definitely doing well. And a lot of people, I've got a lot of good feedback from it. And yes. the tracks on that album, like there's different people that pull from different things and they've liked and loved the album. Mm -hmm. Do iTunes um, reggae charts number one. Mm -hmm. And in the general charts, it was number two for the yeah. Oh, nice. So it was doing well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Your inspiration is working. I guess so. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's all about making sure that is he's good and what you exactly. can do to help that. Exactly. So anything I can do to help him, that's what I'll do. Okay. 
Well, my dear, I've been all over the bush asking um, a thousand, <laughs> a whole heap of questions. <laughs> I don't know what else to ask you, um, except that to thank you for, uh, I just want to thank you for coming and sharing with us. But to say, if you wish to say anything else to us, please feel free to do so. Tell us things that we probably should have asked you about or things that you'd like to tell us about you or... Um, there isn't anything I can think of at the moment, but it's a pleasure to be here. I've watched you on um, YouTube a few times, so it's a pleasure to be here. Oh, it's good. It's good to have you. We thank you for coming and sharing with us. We wish you well. We thank hope you. this will work out for you, for both of you. Thank you. And um, we can only look forward to when you come back to our stage yes. to update us <laughs> and, and, and good news or, definitely. Um, in your life. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you so much, my dear. Thank you. Thank you. And that's our show for this week. Winford Williams, on behalf of all of us, thanking you for joining us. Do join us again next week for more On Stage. Thanks for watching our video. Please click subscribe and be on our stage anywhere, anytime, always.